Hello everybody, Jonathan here from Vancouver Fit Body Bootcamp and we are on day three of our mobility month. And so today, our first two days didn't include any exercises. We talked, just inter, did an introduction for mobility and then we talked about self-massage and releasing some of the tension in our muscles so that we can get greater movement when we go into the mobility drills that we're about to go into. So today is the first day that we're actually incorporating some mobility. And we're gonna go through very quickly through breathing because that makes a big difference in terms of your ability to get your body in the right position um, and get the most out of the mobility drills that we're gonna do. And second is then right after that, I'm gonna teach you a quick test to do for yourself so you get your body in the right position and then we're gonna retest that after we go through a couple different exercises. All right, so step one, breathing. The biggest, biggest thing that we need to understand is we take 15 to 20,000 breaths in a day and the way we breathe is gonna influence the amount of tension we have in our body. So if we're taking smaller, shallower breaths, more rapid breaths, typically like if we're stressed out, that actually creates more tone and tension in the muscles in our body and it's gonna create, it's gonna make it harder for us to move freely and through bigger ranges of motion. So number one is we wanna learn how to breathe and we wanna release that tension in the body before going in. So uh, I'm gonna move the camera here, we're gonna to go to a different angle and then we will teach some box breathing. Everybody, so I'm gonna get you to come down to the floor with me and actually go through this with me. So once you're lying down on the ground, you'll notice that right now my rib cage is kind of sticking up a little bit and part of that is from the curve of my back but part of it is I just have some tension built up in my back here as well. So one of the best first things that we can do to get our body in the right position for a lot of these moves is depressing dropping that rib cage but the easiest way to do that is just by breathing. So instead of trying to like crunch and press it down all I want you to do is just breathe out and do a full exhale. So you'll notice I dropped down a good inch there. Now the next step I want you to do is once you exhale, I want you to keep your rib cage in that position, place one hand on your chest, one hand on your stomach. And what I want you to do is once you exhale, I want you to breathe in and inhale into your stomach only and cause your belly to raise up, but, not, but keeping your chest at the exact same level. So breathe out and then breathe into your stomach And notice as I did that, my chest didn't raise at all. Now, that is what's called diaphragm breathing or diaphragmatic breathing. And it may take a while if your body doesn't know how to do that. You may have to teach yourself how to do that. And it may take a while and this may just be your first step. And just breathing into your stomach and not letting that chest raise at all. All right, so what I would recommend people if you're not there yet, do 10 perfect breaths before you allow yourself to kind of move on with your day. So once you wake up in the morning, uh, before you go to bed, lie down and do 10 perfect belly breaths without that chest raising up. If the belly chest raises up, don't count it. And then this will just teach us how to use our diaphragm to breathe and then that's gonna get us in a better position. So once you have that, box breathing is essentially breathing out four seconds, holding it for four seconds, and then inhaling, and then holding for four, and then just repeating that cycle, four in, hold for four, four out, hold for four, and then repeating that cycle, all right? And that box breathing will bring us into our next position and our next exercise here. All right, so before we get into these mobility exercises, I wanna have you do a test and retest so you can see what the difference is by doing these mobility exercises. So it's gonna be very simple for the next couple days. We're gonna do a test and a retest before each time that we do these mobility exercises. And the first one is basically just getting onto all fours, Shoulders forward, you're gonna bring one hand up to, your, up to your ears here, and basically you're just gonna go from this position here, and then you're gonna rotate as far as you can, and just notice how far that is. Come back to the start, and then do it on the other side. And just get an idea of how much rotation that you have, and at the end, I'm also, we're gonna do this again, and we're gonna retest and see if you increased your rotational ability uh, in that exercise by doing the other two mobility drills. Because this is what it's about. It's about doing these mobility drills so we have more movement. And we want to be able to test and retest because some of these exercises are going to work for you and some may not that well. But we want to test them to see which ones work the best for us. So our first exercise that we're going to do is, many people are aware of it, it's the cat and cow. Uh, many people have done it within yoga. And basically what that looks like, except we're just going to do a slightly different variation. 
So the one in yoga typically looks like full flexion of the entire back, upper, middle, lower back, full flexion, and then going into full extension as much as they can, opening up, and then going back and repeating that process. What we wanna do, because our focus is trying to increase mobility in the upper back, is we're gonna keep the lower back in the exact same position throughout the entire movement, and we're just gonna focus on the upper back. So, number one, knees underneath the hips, hands underneath the shoulders, we're gonna keep our back, find that position where we're not extended, we're not rounded, but we're just keeping in neutral in that lower back. The shoulders is we don't want the shoulders collapsed back. We wanna push them forward so they're in a good, strong position there. And then this is where we start our movement from. Once we're here, all we're gonna do, we're gonna keep the lower back where it is, but we're gonna breathe out and we're gonna create a nice big flexion rotation through that upper back. Notice my lower back doesn't change. And I rotate, squeeze, breathing out. And then I'll open up and I'll extend, but I'm not gonna extend to the lower back. Keep that neutral and I just extend to the upper back and then I repeat. Rounding all through the upper back. And then opening up and just extending through that upper back and going back and forth. And that is the cat-cow variation. And that's, I would recommend going through at least five to 10 of those repetitions, just creating that motion and that movement into the back, which it doesn't normally get throughout the day. And then we're gonna go the next step. If you can hold the position, I'm gonna show you the next exercise here to go through. All right, so the second variation that you can do is called a shin box. And so that's just the position that we'll be in, but we're gonna do the same flexion and extension that we just did. So a shin box. Now this is if you can get in this position, so we may need to build you up to this, but if you're able to, it essentially looks like 90 and 90 at your hip and your knee. So this is essentially a shin box is what it's called. It's, it's very common in martial arts. But what you're gonna do is, whatever leg is forward, you're gonna twist into that leg, and I'm gonna have my hand in line with my knee, and my other hand in line with my hip, and I'm going to twist and have my chest nice and open, shoulders down here, and then what I'm gonna do here is again, breathe out, so I cause that rib cage to drop, and then I round as much as I'm able to, it's gonna be a lot more limited compared to the little one, one we just did. And then create a little bit of extension, open up the chest, and then collapse. And then creating that extension. So you do five to 10 reps one side, and then you can rotate, go into the other position so you get those legs right. And then again, hand down with the knee and the hip, open up, rib cage down, shoulders down, and then breathe out round and then create some extension and part of the reason I'm adding in the rotation there is a lot of our day is spent just being forward we'll rotate our entire body to go and open the door or if you're in a, in a chair at your desk you swivel the whole chair to grab something out of a filing cabinet and we're lacking a lot of rotational movement now and so that allows this shin box allows us to add that rotation in and then go through that flexion and extension at the same time, which gives some great benefits for us. So that is your mobility exercise and step for day one, or essentially day three of mobility month. And again, and one thing that you can do to retest is to go into your hands and knees here, have the fingertips at your ears, open up as far as you can, and see if after you've gone through those flexion extension exercises, if you can move a little bit farther than you were able to on the very first time before you did those two movements.